I'm going to give you a brief synopsis, then I'll go through a timeline of how it all went down, and then I'll entertain any additional questions. Uh, we are today here at 1006 South Center Street, where we had initial reports of fire and heavy flames coming out of the back of a residential structure, uh, as well as reports of multiple people who were trying to uh, self-extricate and evacuate the structure. Our first units arrived on scene to find flames showing from the back, and they started an initial attack through the front door going in. They encountered heavy fire, high heat, and low visibility. They continued to make entry into the fire and called for additional units to circle around into the back to take an attack line to the back as well as to do VEIS, Vent Enter uh, Isolate Search Procedures, as they were having extreme constricted conditions due to hoarder conditions. They fought the fire. It escalated, and I'll go over that in the timeline, how we went defensive, and we did end up doing using those exterior fire operations of the VEIS to bring out two patients. Uh, one patient was able to come out himself and was uh, reported for medical treatment, and eventually three dogs were also removed. There are reports of possibly more people, but our initial primary and secondary search have not found that anymore. But due to those extreme conditions, we will wait to make sure the fire is completely there and do a thorough search to find any other possible uh, occupants of the structure. I'll now go over the timeline. That first fire was called in at 1500. That's 3 p.m. this afternoon. Our first unit was on scene at 302. They came in, as I said, started an offensive attack uh, with those uh, very difficult conditions. At 312, the fire was uh, reported to extend to a back structure, a large shed-like structure that was behind the residential structure. Due to this and the difficulty of the interior conditions, the operation transitioned to a defensive fire operations where we were focused on external operations such as that vent enter search to get people uh, to look for and to find uh, people who were reported to still be inside. When those first units arrived on scene, there were multiple people who were exiting the structure and reporting there was additional people. At uh, Those external uh, operations started at 315. At 318, the first victim was brought out and delivered to EMS. At 320, the second victim was brought out from a back corner be bedroom through the window and also delivered to EMS. At 325, that primary search was completed in all the external uh, corners and bedrooms that we could access from the external. At 328, the conditions had improved from external firefighting operations, and we were able to resume internal offensive operations. The fire was knocked down at 331, and then at 339, during our secondary search, where we continued throughout the entirety of the interior we were able to find those additional dogs. Our total units that we used on this fire, we had 15 units with over 45 firefighters that were involved in this. Those heavy conditions and the heat of, te of Texas summer made for extreme difficulties in there. There was also no indications of any working smoke detectors that we've been able to establish at this time. Uh, I will now pass it on to EMS to talk about the conditions of any of those patients and then we'll answer any questions. I'm Captain Krista Stedman, C-H-R-I-S-T-A, S-T-E-D-M-A-N. I'm the Public Information Officer for Austin Travis County EMS. Uh, as Chief De La Reza mentioned, at 1500 today we received reports of the structure fire. Austin Travis County EMS paramedics arrived on scene. Since the initial uh, patients were delivered, we have treated a total of four patients on the scene. Two of those patients, both adults, were transported with CPR in progress in critical life-threatening condition. One went to Del Seton and one went to St. David South Austin. A third patient, also an adult, was transported to Del Seton with minor injuries 
and the fourth patient was treated and released at the scene. Austin Travis County EMS had five ambulances, three district commanders, one physician, and one physician assistant on this scene. And I will pass it back to you. The last couple of points I want to make before I open up for questions is we did have two firefighters that were injured on the scene fighting this fire. Uh, one, uh, both minor injuries, but one was uh, lower extremity and one was due to the heat there. These conditions, as I mentioned there, we're, we're fighting very hot fires in very hot conditions of the Texas summer. Uh, it's important that everyone stays hydrated, not only our firefighters, but also our residents of Austin as we have these conditions. Additionally, I cannot stress this enough, working smoke detectors are critical to the life safety of you and any residents in your in your uh, bu building. So please check your uh, your smoke detectors and make sure that they're working. They are always uh, sensing for for smoke conditions and will give you those minutes that are necessary to safely exit a structure when it does start. With that, I'll open it up to any questions. Well, you mentioned the smoke detector. Yep. You mentioned the smoke detector. I can't make any assumptions on what happens. I can share that my reports from our initial in-scene, on-scene units is there was no indication of any smoke detectors that were going off in an alert mode. I can't. Uh, I can only talk about what I got reports from our firefighters who arrived on scene. But when they made entry to start that initial fire attack, they found extremely constricted conditions there that will slow down any type of fire attack or internal operations. There was high constriction due to hoarder conditions. There was high heat and low visibility. Can we get an idea of how many people lived in that house? No, we do. We got reports of multiple, upwards of four people who had. Were, self, were exiting the structure when we arrived on scene. Reports of many, uh, three to four people additionally inside, like what we found, we did uh, uh, search and find two additional patients, victims inside that we, uh, we rescued and saved from those external operations through that VEIS and we gave to EMS and that she, uh, Captain Stedman talked about. Scott. Have there been any updates So the information that we have is that both patients have since been pronounced deceased at the hospitals. Are you mentioned three dogs, the dog taken? Uh, they were, two of them were, were brought out alive, one of them was deceased. I do not know have a current condition of those two dogs, but they were alive when we brought them out. The two victims, do we have any information? Do we know male, female, possible ages? Uh, we, they're both adults, but we can't really use genders. Yeah, so, you know, there's two things, two big things that we worry about um, when it comes to treating patients that have been involved in a fire. Burns is the obvious one. I know that at least one of the patients had significant burns. Um, one of the other big ones that we worry about is cyanide. Cyanide is a byproduct of, of smoke and conditions like this. Um, and so our paramedics actually treated both patients as if uh, they had been exposed to cyanide. And do we have any indication of what started the fire? No, there'll be an extensive uh, investigation to cause, with, like I said, with those heavily constricted conditions inside, we're going to be prioritizing doing a search and slowly, methodically removing those internal structure uh, conditions there to look for any additional victims that weren't able to be uh, found on the primary and secondary. Now that it, the fire conditions are controlled, we can do that in a slower, methodical. As part of that is a source for where the fire first started and what were the possible causes for it. We'll have to search. There, there was multiple reports that were very disparate in their origins, so they're conflicting with themselves in there. So we won't know until we do the full investigation. Uh, was there any damage to any surrounding structures? And if not, how close did it come to there being damage to those surrounding structures? That fire did extend to the back structure, the structure that was on that same property, but was an ex a, a separate additional structure in the back. Uh, it was extinguished there, and I can't talk about the damages yet. That will be part of that investigation.
How close did it come to damaging surrounding houses? I don't have an answer to that. So could you just recap how many people were in the house? And, uh... I, I don't have a total count. What I can tell is that there were there were multiple people, upwards of four or potentially more, who were exiting the structure when our first units arrived on scene. Our fire units did extricate and, and, and rescue or pull out two victims there that were in need of medical condition and had life-threatening injuries that were delivered to EMS. So we know two people came out. Uh, four, at least four had self-exited while the unit's there, and we had an, uh, multiple patients who then reported around this, uh, the, the building of origin to EMS requesting EMS and medical services. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Television, si quieres en español, lo puedo? Yeah, por favor. Si, tell the mundo? Yes, please. All right, no? All right. What was your title again? Assistant Chief Andre de la Reza. Andre, R-N-D-R-E? Yes. Sorry. A-N-D-R-E? Yeah. Yes, yeah, comments, fine. Yeah. I didn't. Tell All right. All the comments, fine. Now, mind you. So, Espanol, no, soy fine. gringo. Can we, can we get a mic? Yeah. Let's let everyone pull their okay. mics who yeah, need no, it, fine. and then we'll continue. Yeah, perfect. Sorry. That's all right. I'd rather you be responsible for your equipment than myself. Thank you. You're done uh, with any new information. Yeah, any, any further information, we'll just tweet out. Okay. Thank you all again for joining us on KXAN Live. Uh, Will Dupree in the KXAN Live studio. We've been listening in to the Austin Fire Department and the Austin Travis County EMS deliver updates about this um, now deadly fire that happened in South Austin. We just heard from Austin Travis County EMS that two people who had been pulled from this home on South Center Street have been taken to the hospital and have now been pronounced dead. Uh, so they're confirming that two people have now died from this fire that happened uh, this afternoon at about three o'clock. Another person has been taken to the hospital as well. A fourth person was looked at there at the scene and released. Uh, so fortunately that person is okay there. But again, two people have died after this fire. If you're wondering where that fire is located, it is on 1006 South Center Street. This is just north of 290, very close to South 1st Street, if you're familiar with that area in South Austin. An investigation is underway about what caused this fire, so we do not have details to report out about that at this time. However, the Austin Fire Department will be providing updates and we'll be working to get that information from them. So please stay with us as we continue reporting out this developing story there in South Austin. Uh, we anticipate that the scene will be active a little bit longer. You can see that there's some uh, tape there across the area blocking the sidewalk. Multiple units had to respond to this because they said the conditions were very dangerous due to hoarding conditions inside the house. That prevented searches from happening inside as well as also preventing firefighters from going in there to not only look for people but also put out the fire. Uh, so. Again, more information about this uh, deadly fire in South Austin will be available on our website, so please stay with us uh, throughout the afternoon as we work to learn a little bit more. Uh, once again, I'm Will Dupree in the KXA Live Studio. Thank you all again for joining us here. We'll see you back here at another time for other updates. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. Take care.